On February 14th, Nicholas Cruz walked into Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, possible AR-15 or AK-47, just before class let out for the day. Hello, 911, ma'am, go ahead. Armed with a high-powered rifle, he opened fire. There were three shots in your room? There were three shots in her room. Okay. Oh, my God. Shock and pain quickly turned to anger in Parkland, Florida. If all our government and president can do is send thoughts and prayers, then it's time for victims to be the change that we need to see. Other students around the country followed their lead, organizing thousands of protests and walkouts. It's as simple as I shouldn't have to fear for my life every day in school. Tonight, student leaders from around Oregon and Southwest Washington join us to discuss what they think needs to change to protect students from gun violence at school. This is a KGW original. Students demand action. Hello everyone, thanks for being with us and welcome to a KGW original. Students demand action. I'm Tracy Berry. And I'm Laurel Porter. The horror of the mass shooting last month in Parkland, Florida, quickly gave rise to a wave of student activism. Last week, tens of thousands of students across the country walked out of class and sat silent for 17 minutes, honoring the 17 students killed in Parkland. The students are demanding action to protect students better and stop future shootings. And tonight we have a panel of student leaders from high schools across our region with a wide array of political viewpoints. And we'll talk with them shortly. But first, we want to set up this discussion with a stark reminder of how gun violence has affected schools right here in Oregon. In the past two decades, we have had at least six shootings on school campuses. Some of them, of course, are infamous, but some may have already faded from your memory. And everybody was standing there and he just started shooting. And everybody was like running and getting out of there. We have a report of gunshots at Roseburg High School. He got shot from the back, he didn't see it, didn't hear anything, there was no warning. Gunshots blast through two windows at Springwater Trail High School. All of a sudden, we heard this big boom. You can't describe in words how you feel up here waiting for your student to get off the bus. Can you imagine what it's like to not have a student get off the bus? It's just heartbreaking for us to see this kind of senseless violence. These kids matter to us. We want this to be a safe place for them. This is an active shooter at UCC. He's in the classroom on the, it's going to be the southeast side of all. That means there are more American families. Moms, dads, children, whose lives have been changed forever. We have students from around Oregon and Southwest Washington joining us tonight to talk about this issue. And we want to do a brief introduction here. Starting in the back left is Adam Morrow. He's a senior at Oregon City High School. Tanner Elliott is a senior at Grant Union High School in John Day. Thanks for driving in, Tanner. Winston Handworker is a junior at Evergreen High School in Vancouver. And Russ Vela is a junior at Santiam Christian School just outside of Corvallis. Moving now to the front row, Mauricio Samayeda Ruiz is a junior at Jefferson High School in Portland. Eva Jones is a sophomore at Hood River Valley High School. Megan Turley is a sophomore at Tigard High School. Lauren Wilk is a senior at Lincoln High School in Portland. Thank you all for being here. We're so glad to have you here for this important discussion. Absolutely. You know, I was thinking about you guys today, and I realized that you have all grown up in the shadow of Columbine. 
school shootings have been a part of your storyline your entire education. So let's just start simple with a show of hands. How many of you are worried, afraid at school? A good number, not everyone. So let's dig down into that a little bit. Let's start with Lauren. Why do you feel unsafe at school? I mean, it's a constant kind of fear that anyone could just walk in, especially at my high school in downtown Portland. All our doors are unlocked. Anyone can walk in the front door, and it's just a constant fear that anyone who has any anger towards us or anything at all that wants to come harm us can, and they have that ability. Have you experienced any school threat? Yeah, about two years ago, my sophomore year, we had a gun threat at school written on a bathroom stall, and it was taken care of by administration and PPS, but it was one of those moments where you realize, although nothing was taken action of during that time, that anyone could have been real about that threat and could have walked into our school with a gun. I know some of you guys in the back, I know you didn't raise your hand, so you do feel safe at school. Adam, jump in. What is about your school where you feel okay and you don't worry about this? Well, I'm very thankful because our school has two school resource officers that are there full time. And uh, they've taken a lot of work to make sure that they've made a personal relationship with us. Even though there's 2,000 students, it feels like you can just go up to them and talk to them. And just knowing that they're there at the school ready for whatever is going to come in, it makes me feel a lot safer. That's Oregon City High School too. Yes. Does anybody else have a school resource officer that makes them feel safer? Does that help you, Eva, feel safer? Um, personally, uh, I know that they, we do have uh, a police officer on campus, but it does not make me feel any more safe. Um, be, I mean, there's one officer and there were officers there at the Parkland shooting and they do amazing work, but I don't think that they can be stopping these kind of terrorists from happening. Anybody else want to weigh in on that topic? jump in? I just, I think it's difficult when it's a school of 2,000, 1,000 students and you have one resource officer. Like in Parkland, they only had a few, but for thousands of students and a large school campus, if someone came in with a gun, it's going to take more than one resource officer at your school to find them and let alone get all those kids out. Let's talk about ways that maybe you would feel safer at your school. Is there anything besides a school resource officer that would make some of you feel safer? Anything that you would recommend? I think knowing that there's legislation in place to protect kids from knowing that there's going to be someone who not meant necessarily meant to have a gun can get access to it. So knowing there's legislation to prevent people who might not necessarily be mentally fit to have guns to prevent them from getting it would be definitely something that would make me feel safer. Well, certainly Absolutely. one idea that's been floated is arming some teachers or personnel at the school. Now, let's just do a quick show of hands and then we'll break it down from there. How many of you would support that idea? The president is behind. He certainly supports it, arming some members of the faculty. Teachers, anybody? Okay, well, why don't you jump in, uh, Russ? Why, what, do you, what are your yeah, thoughts on I that? Yeah, I don't think uh, arming every teacher is necessary, but I do think that if they've passed the concealed carry uh, laws, they have the mental checks and the background checks, and even some additional training, I don't see why they shouldn't be able to carry on school, uh, carry on campus, and protect us. I mean, when the police come, they're coming to shoot the guy and to get him <laughs> off of us. And I think having that uh, time frame cut down by the people on campus is really helpful. How about you, Tanner? Yeah. So, well, a point I like to make is when a school shooting happens, the first people that we call is police. And the reason why, it's not because they have sticks in there and beat the guy down, it's because they have guns. If teachers would go through the training and could get guns, I think we could save the we, it would save time, it could save lives. I think the uh, recent school shooting in Maryland proved that, that when there are school guns on campus, school campuses, that it can save lives. Yeah, jump in, just go right ahead. Okay. Um, I completely disagree. I think that arming teachers is a preposterous idea. We don't need more guns in our schools. Schools are a place of learning. They're a place of creativity, environment. We don't need to be closing our schools down and locking them up. I will not learn in a prison-like environment and um, putting more guns in schools when our teachers should be going to more training to learn how to teach different types of kids, different backgrounds connecting with us instead of having to go through different training facilities, um, as well as, I mean, where I, in my community, we can barely afford to pay the teachers as is, and I don't see how we're gonna be able to afford. You wanna respond, Tanner? Um, President Trump said that he would, I think, believe it's a 
you could give the teachers a pay increase if they'd accept having guns. So that's just Why a not give the money right, to the teachers, yeah. resources I know, for teachers. But I'm just saying. But I mean, um, the taxes are going to come out of our community who yeah. already can't pay for that. So. But don't see that this is work. about protecting oh, kids. Oh, okay. Arming teachers is definitely not the way to make me feel safer in schools personally. It raises a lot of questions. Where is the gun kept? Is it kept on the person? Is it kept in a safe? What happens if the teacher gets shot? Does a good student take the gun? Like, what is the procedure? How do you, what if it accidentally fires during class? There's so many questions that can be raised simply by arming teachers <coughs> and it not making you feel safer. I absolutely agree with that. I think that the only arming that should occur is that our teachers should be arming us with the education we need to be civilized, uh, be a civilized society. Um, I am not by any means anti-Second Amendment. I just think that mm -hmm. we should be, I think that we should have guns on school property, um, but I think those should be delegated to the school resource officers. I would not feel safe with teachers having guns, and I don't think that teachers would feel safe with teachers having guns. I know you guys have a lot to say about this. We <laughs> want to move on because we don't have a lot of time okay. to another question. How many of you have lockdown drills at your school, and do you feel like the students are taking them seriously? So you all Everyone. have had the lockdown drills? Mauricio, I know you have yeah. some concerns about them. Yeah, so um, uh, what I've noticed a lot is that during our lockdown drills, it's always very loud. And um, one, for one, I really, don't feel safe when this is how we practice for something that could potentially save our lives. And um, I feel that uh, staff shouldn't only be you know, trained better on how to react to these drills, like during the drills and how like a situation would happen in real life, but also how they maintain the students calm and how the students react to these drills, not by necessarily screaming and having a fun time and be like making jokes about this, but taking this more seriously so that when, if it does happen, we are better prepared. So how many of you participated in last week's walkout? So just about almost people, six of you. So let me hear from you why you felt it was important to, to walk out. Anybody want to start this oh. off? I think that being a part of the walkout really shows the unity of students on this issue and it shows that we're united to show that we are fed up with the way we're being treated by legislators when we call for action and to show that if they won't save us with legislation, we'll take actions necessary to save ourselves. Winston, you've been awfully quiet. We're going to put you on the spot. And you organized one in your school, yeah. didn't you? Yes, I did organize the walkout at my school. I joined the walkout because I, at my school specifically, I feel that we do need to be safer and more of I'm more of at the school, that's my issue, is how our school, as Lincoln, we have lots of doors that are just easily accessed mm -hmm. around the school. True. I believe we should be more supervised. I think that um, doing the walkout helped people realize that we do have a voice. I think that was one really important thing, that we, mm -hmm. everyone has a different opinion, but they should be able to be heard, and we, are not, we might not be adults yet, but yeah. we have mm -hmm. voices. So, Russ, yeah, Rush, you didn't participate. I did not, no. How, now, why? Well, in our school, we didn't have a big uh, community looking forward to it. And I also don't think walking out of school is really going to get the job done. I think what we need to do is have actual solutions that we can implant in the school. Instead of going on of a tangent about gun control, I think we can have stuff we can do today that we can fix in the schools, uh, either having uh, more, uh, like going into the schools, having security that way, like we do in airports or sporting events, or even uh, uh, high elected officials. Uh, are the kids not more important than those officials? So that's what I think, and I also think we can go through uh, protective measures at the school instead of just talking about gun control. Well, that has been one thing that's been talked about, that schools are too easy of a target, right? Mm -hmm. That we're really tight at other places. Why not at schools? Would you feel comfortable with tighter security measures at your school? It depends on what they look like. I, I exactly. disagree. I would not. Um, I think the only way to fix this solution is to make it harder to get a gun. Um, mm -hmm. Putting all these barriers up in our schools is only going to make it harder for us to learn and have a creative environment that can foster growth and creativity. Um, there's no way that uh, all these safety measures are just based on the acceptance that that's what happens in America, that our schools are going to get shot up, that people are going to bring guns into the community. And mm -hmm. I'm not okay with that. And I'm not just going to assume that that's what's going to happen and I'm going to fight for a change to make that Tanner, stop. what do you think from John Day? What does your community feel like you didn't participate in the walkout? <clears throat> um, first off, why I didn't, I would, uh, I didn't participate in the walkout because I was at the county court meeting in my county. I'm currently running for county commissioner. I'd like to give a shout out to everybody watching <laughs> around county also. Um, <clears throat> but, I mean, a point I'd like to make is 
We didn't blame fertilizer for the Oklahoma City bombing. We didn't blame the pressure cookers for the Boston Marathon bombing. And we didn't blame, we didn't blame the planes for 9-11. We blame the person. It's the person who commits the crimes, not the weapon. What we need to do is put more funding, I believe, in mental health. And another point I'd like to make, just to go back to the arming the teachers, I think another idea would be giving them rubber bullets. Rubber bullets can break bones and they hurt. But, I mean, kids are dying and we need to take, we need to protect our kids and, you know, I think we should take every mean way, means and ways possible and to do it. We're going to talk more about that. I know they all have something to say, but we have to take a break right now. We'll talk more about the march on Saturday and some of the actions that the students are demanding and, and hear more of your thoughts from all perspectives when we come back. Thanks, more. Welcome back to Students Demand Action, a KGW original. We're pleased tonight to have eight high school student leaders from around Oregon and Southwest Washington. We're discussing action they're demanding to end gun violence on school campuses. The students leading Saturday's March for Our Lives have specific demands. They want Congress to do three things, ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines, and close loopholes in America on background checks for gun purchases. So let's talk about that. And during the break, you all were kind of debating what we're yeah. doing. Yeah. It's the great, they segment. don't stop, right? <laughs> yeah, you missed some of the really good stuff. No, just kidding. Let's talk about a few of those issues and just to find out where you stand on, how about the, um, how about a ban on assault rifles? Who's in favor of that? Totally. So kind of a split there. Okay, totally, you said. Yeah. Tell me. Um, just because, like, I'm, I'm for, you know, the Second Amendment, people should be allowed to carry weapons, you know, they have the rights. And, but I also feel that us as students, we have a right to safe learning. And mm -hmm. um, not only are uh, assault rifles, uh, like, it could cause, they cause more damage than a regular handheld gun, you know, like a handgun. Um, so just, and not only that, but also like guns were designed, were made to harm or kill. So um, I feel, that there is no need for a weapon like this of this that you know caliber, caliber that, mm -hmm. to yeah. be used or had or used by anybody in school. Winston, what do you think? Do you well, support a ban on <laughs> assault weapons? I do. I just they, after all, it you see that there's a sign that they keep using the same gun, yeah. mm -hmm. the same type of gun. So if they keep using that, why not take it away? Because it does do more than a regular handgun. So. Why not stop that? Let's hear from somebody who, yeah, who's. Uh, I actually disagree with you. Uh, most uh, mass shootings are done by handguns. The deadliest school shooting in history, and, uh, US history, Virginia Tech, in 2007 was actually done by a handgun. And Glocks, you can easily do as much as, uh, they're just assault weapons, just semi-auto weapons, just like a handgun. So, so what's the use for an assault weapon then? Why do we need them? Well, it, if you mind, if I, yeah, go ahead. Um, so you don't you don't uh, need assault weapons. It's a civil right. It's a thing we have in the Constitution that gives us the liberty to be able that you don't need to go to church, you don't need to get a job, but it's a right we have in this country to freedom, and it's to protect us from tyrannical governments and safety here in our communities. My biggest issue with the assault weapons ban is that it's so hard to actually define what an assault weapon mm -hmm. is. In 1994, we had an assault weapons ban, um, and Clinton's Department of Justice, after it had sunsetted, had come and said it made no real impact. And although I do like the idea of uh, taking these away, it just, it, will, it would be way too hard to confiscate these guns or at least prevent them from being uh, produced because it's so hard. You can add a piece of plastic to a, a regular looking gun and then you can define it as an assault weapon. Eva, what do you think? Um, I would like to jump back to the Second Amendment and that was made in a time of uh, muskets and those are not the kind of man uh, killing military grade weapons of war that we're speaking about in today's uh, society. And there's no Absolutely. reason for a civilian to have a gun of that power. Um, for hunting, for self-defense, like there's, you don't use an, an assault rifle to go hunting. You don't need an assault rifle for self-defense. I don't see the reason to protect these guns over anything else. And 
Another recommendation yeah. is, is raising the age to purchase a firearm from 18 to 21. How many would support that? And you would not, Tanner, why not? Well, <clears throat> an 18 through 20 year old, which would be, is they're pretty much an adult. You can vote, you can die for your country. Some of them have families, and I believe they should be able to own firearms to protect their families because if you're 18 and let's say you have a kid and a wife, you should be able to protect your family. Um, but back to the point where you can vote for the leaders of your country and you can die for your country, but you're not telling me that I can't have a gun. I disagree with that. You know, we've had a, a lot of mass shootings. You all know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of times we hear these protests and these ideas, but very little, if anything, changes. The conversation seems to fizzle until the next mass shooting. Okay. Do you think things are different this time? Absolutely. Yes. Why? Um, I think that this time students have really realized that they have power now to go out and ignite change and we're realizing that the news consistently we're starting to disregard shootings where one or two people die as second we've accepted as a country that we have shootings in schools and we can't do that it's kids can't be swept aside because only one or two people died in a school shooting. You need to keep this conversation going until we see stuff to change it. So Lauren, a lot of people will be watching this, possibly policy makers. What message would you want them to hear from you? One thing that's really stuck for, uh, with me from a lot of the students uh, from Parkland who have spoken, especially Emma Gonzalez, she said that we will vote them out. And right. that's yeah. one thing that I completely agree with. I'm turning 18 in about two months. I'm already a registered voter in the state of Oregon and if they don't want to change anything and they don't want to make it a safer education place for us then we will vote them out and I think that's the most important thing is and I think that's a huge reason why student activism is at its highest point right now is we're not afraid of anything. Mm -hmm. At this point we're not afraid to protest, we're not afraid to walk on Washington, march on Washington. We are here to change what's going to happen next and Although we've kind of slept on these smaller shootings and we've slept on the shootings in the past, like we're not afraid of anything now. And we some of you are marching on Saturday. How yes. many of you are marching on Saturday? Uh, Adam, we only have a few seconds. Message you'd like to leave with policymakers? Well, I think that most importantly, um, it's so important that we're having these conversations with people that have opposing views. And I think um, mm -hmm. we need to come together and say we aren't interested in looking for. Uh, policy that moves us to the left or to the right, I'm interested in getting policy passed that moves us forward. And I think mm -hmm. that um, we it's finally coming to the point where Republicans and Democrats are actually starting to come together, and that's very encouraging. Well, maybe mm -hmm. we should take you all to Congress. I think <laughs> maybe this group of kids could yeah. make a difference. Right. Thank you yeah. so much You're for joining us. Thank you for having Thank me. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we we want to let people know that if you have any concerns that someone might want to commit an act of violence at a school, the state of Oregon has a tip line set up to help. It's called the Safe Oregon Tip Line. It accepts calls or texts, and here's the number, 844-472-3367. Well, this went all too quickly. We'd love to see you all again. And for now, though, we will continue the conversation and our coverage on our social media platforms and kgw.com. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.